what a fantastic morning as you can see over here we've got fog in the valley and i've come out for a sunrise and it is so stunning and peaceful Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So, as you can see, I'm not in my studio or on a mountain somewhere, I'm actually in a forklift truck just about to load the calendars on to a lorry. And I can't believe it, it makes it real when I see all these calendars and that everybody's bought, so thanks ever so much for buying a calendar if you have done. You should be getting them within sort of three or four weeks, they've got to go down to a distribution centre and then they'll go out to the various countries all, all, all over the world. Um, and this week's been quite an interesting week really because I was out shooting the amazing fog that we had. If you looked at my Instagram stories you probably saw that and I was actually shooting that fog and um, I, I had one day that I got an amazing shot and one day that I really didn't get any great shots. Unfortunately the day that I vlogged was a day that I didn't get great shots. And it made me think a little bit about creativity and how you need to take your time and think about things and how you need to change things up a little bit. So I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about creativity and how, you know, I've lost my creativity a little bit this summer and how I want to sort of regain, regain that a little bit. But I did take an amazing shot the day before where I had a lot more time, but that shot came out of nothing. I wasn't expecting it. And often that's the case with photography. Something just comes out of nothing. So. I'm going to load these calendars, we'll jump back into the studio, I'll show you some of the footage and I'll talk to you about what happened on, on that morning as well because I had so many things go, go wrong, um, including forgetting my XQD card for my Z7. Okay. As I mentioned, I've been in a bit of a creative rut recently, so I've been trying to do things a little bit differently. I've gone out on my own a little bit more um, and shot just with my camera, not doing any video, and that's started to make a bit of a difference, I think. I've started to get some images that, that I'm, I'm really pleased with, which I often don't do in the summer. I've gone out more in the midday um, light rather than just going out at sunrise and sunset. And I've started to just shoot different types of things as well. And it's really starting to pay off and I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm getting out of that. And um, yeah, it's, it's starting to work. But this week was amazing. I'm gonna talk about the image I shot that I really liked um, later on in the video. But first of all, what I wanted to do is talk to you about some images that didn't work. I often find that it's a good idea to share the images that don't work as much as the ones that do work because it's certainly for me, if I try and understand why they're, they're not working, it helps and hopefully it, it can help you guys. Um, and if you've got your own images, then I, I suggest that you spend more time you know, trying to work out why the ones that didn't work didn't work rather than you know, spend time on, 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 on the ones you love because that's how you're gonna be, improve your photography. So, we, I, had, I went out on two mornings. One, as I said, produced a really good image. The other one was just a bit crazy, really. So it started off, um, and I'll show you. I'll show you the start of the video in a second. But it started off. I'd forgotten my XQD card for my um, Nikon Z7, which was a complete disaster. I didn't ever have the spare that I usually keep in in, in my camera bag as well, because I cleaned out my camera bag. Luckily, I was with Lauren, um, and she had another camera, so we had two cameras, and she could film it all good, but it wasn't, it didn't end there. So we'll start with the beginning of the video and I'll come back. What a fantastic morning. As you can see over here, we've got fog in the valley and I've come out for a sunrise and it is so stunning and peaceful. One of those peaceful summer mornings where you can just hear all the noises, the noise of the birds. I can't think of any other noises that you might think of, but anyway, it is, uh, could you hear that then? That was a pheasant, I think, or maybe a grouse. So what we're gonna do is, 
I was going to hike into the valley down down below there, but we're going to hike high and then shoot some longer shots up as the sun just comes above this sort of layer of mist in the background. And then maybe if the mist stays, then we'll drop down and get some foggy shots. I also forgot the battery for my Z7. Luckily, I have a backup camera, my Fuji. So you can see it was stunning, amazing conditions. But the rest of the video was just a bit of a disaster really, because two mics failed. I usually have a lapel mic and I didn't plug it in properly and that failed. And the mic that's the hot shoe mic that fits on top of my camera and records the ambient sounds as well as me, just as a backup, on top of Lauren's camera, just didn't work for some reason. Um, now it's a new mic, so maybe, maybe I just didn't set it up correctly, but anyway, it didn't work. So I ended up getting loads of good video footage and no sound. So I'll show you some of that as I go through these photos. The first photo that I wanna show you, which was pro probably my favorite, was this long shot with my long lens on my Fuji um, X-T3. And the light was spectacular. And I was shooting just into the valley here. You can see how beautiful the light is. It was stunning. And I got this shot. Now, this shot is good. I like it, it's simple. Um, so this is probably one of the best shots I got from the morning, really. The lighting's really good. It was quite difficult to get the colour balance right on this because it was quite sort of peach colour. And it, it almost looks wrong, but um, but that little bit of blue at the top, I think, just help hold your eye in a little bit and the clouds at the top. And, and my idea was that we we're going to have these layers going through the scene. But I think that the thing that the reason that this doesn't quite work is it's just a bit too separated, the cloud from the layers at the bottom. So I wasn't really super happy with that. And I knew when I was taking it wasn't gonna be amazing, but actually it turned out being probably the best, the best photo I took. I mean, it's not a bad photo, it's just, it's just not special. And, and I felt like from the conditions I had on this day, which I should have got something special because it was really nice. So then we went over to this wall and this wall was just getting this amazing side light, which was just fantastic. And I've shot here before and I've, I've, I, I, I've always thought I, I need to concentrate on this wall. And what I should have done in hindsight is just concentrate on this wall because there is a good shot here, I'm sure there is, but I didn't get it. But if I'd have spent all my time trying to find the good shot on this wall, I feel like I'd have done better. And I, I always say that in my videos, I say just try and concentrate on one shot rather than many shots, but I made that mistake. because, and, and I think it's because I'm in a bit of a creative rut that I thought I, I just don't, stick with things long enough. I don't I don't just trust my intuition. Um, so I keep changing and, and, and sometimes that's not the best thing to do. So why is this not great? I mean, it's not a bad shot again, but what I was trying to do, I was concentrating on, on the gap between the wall and then going through to the sort of tour in the distance, which was this little peak, mountain peak. And I didn't pay enough attention to this bottom right-hand side, which I feel is sort of negative space, but draws your eye. So it's not it's not positive use of negative space, if that makes sense. And I also spoke about what, in the video that I didn't have any sound on, just talking about the height difference of this wall. So just, you know, I, I had my biggest um, tripod with me that allows me to shoot at eye height, which is a really good top tip, really. Um, I, I find that when you shoot at eye height and you have your camera at eye height and you tilt your, your camera down a little bit, then you get that sweep through from the foreground, through the midground to the distance. And what I was explaining is if you can get higher up, then sometimes that can make a difference to the shot. So you can see that these two shots here, one, this first one, I was high up looking down and the wall slightly you know, di different. It's got a different view to it. I can see more of a sweep through to the, to the distance. Whereas the one where it's a little bit further down has got a different feel to it. Now, it's not that one will be right. You should always be high up or always low down, but I feel like you should have that ability to move up and down. And it's one of the things that I say to people um, that have smaller tripods that you, you're restricting yourself because you're, sometimes you want to be able to shoot higher up. Um, and, and, and so that's important to think about. But this, this has got nice light. It's, it's just not got a lot of detail in the distance. So there's nothing your eye goes to. And then there's this space on the bottom right where I feel that it doesn't really rest easy with me. I don't think it's unbalanced, I just don't think it works as, as, as a shot really. So then we went a little bit further down and I shot this, um, which was similar to the, to the other one but without the sky. And I quite like this. Again, we have layers and I try to just create this really simplistic 
um, sort of grasses at the bottom leading your eye through into the scene. And I quite often like simple things at the at the front of the image or that bottom third of the image and I think this works really well from that point of view but I just think it's a bit meh. I, I, again the heather doesn't really shine, we, I didn't shoot at the right light and because I was trying, you know, this was probably the third composition within 20 or 30 minutes, I was just not spending enough time on one composition. So then I found this signpost to the fourth composition within about 40 minutes which again was stupid um, and this is the bit that the sound did work. So let's go and have a look at that. You can you can listen to me and my thoughts when I was taking this, and then we'll come back and have a look at the image. We're just walking back to the car just to go down into the valley um, to get the mist, and we're probably going to miss the mist because we keep stopping and taking photos. But it's so beautiful up here, and and what what we've got we've still got these recession um, in this in this valley down here, and we found this little scene here with a path. And some heather and it's quite it's quite a complicated scene so i just wanted to sort of explain it a little bit so we've got uh, a post in here on the, on the left hand side which i've tried to sort of isolate in the sort of grass behind it so it's just not crossing over anything um, then it's quite wide angle i've got it on 10 millimeters on my fuji which is equivalent to 16 millimeter full frame and then i can see just one of the peaks over on the left hand side there and then on the right hand side here, you can see the heather. Now, one of the problems that, that I've just got to be, be thinking about is that the heather isn't all purple. There's quite a lot of dark um, heather as well, the green elements of the heather. And, and, and they provide quite a heavy sort of visual element on the right hand side. So by putting this post on the left hand side, and that sort of balance it, balances it off. Now, I know that these two things are, are different, but they've got similar visual weights. So the post is, is a defined object with, a, with, a, with, um, you know, with sides, straight sides, and you know, something that you recognize as a post. So your eye is going to go to that, and then this is quite dark. So the two things sort of almost, I'd say, balance each other off. And then this path sort of leads you down to the wall, another post, so that connects the two things together and then all the way through into, into the distance. So it looks really, really beautiful this. I've got the shot and I'm just gonna wait for a little bit more sunlight to come out, which you probably saw at the beginning of the clip. a lot of time processing this just trying to get something good out of it and sometimes you never get something good out of a bad image you know you can spend days sometimes processing processing an image and get something amazing but you've got to start with something pretty good to begin with i've never really started with something that's poor and then and then being able to process something good out of it and more often than not the best images that i've got require the littlest amount of processing and I was processing this for a lot of time, thinking I've got to be able to get something out of this. I've really got to be able to. It was brilliant light. I should have done. When I was taking it, I was quite excited about it. But it's balance in this image. And I talked about that dark area, which just didn't work. The path's nice. And the sort of distance view's nice. But I feel that this signpost is just too dominant. And what I should have done, in, in hindsight, is I should have moved back a little bit to allow this signpost to be less dominant in the frame because, because the, the whole landscape is quite soft. You know, there's no dominant features in the landscape. So this signpost can't overpower the scene and I feel that I'm just a little bit too close to it even though I'm shooting wide angle. If I'd have moved back maybe four or five feet and again, if I'd have had more time just on one composition, I'd have worked that out. And it's small things, small things make big differences. So if I'd have moved back a little bit, I feel that it would have been less dominant in the frame and I would have got a better shot. So I wanted to talk about those. It was an amazing morning. You've seen some of the footage from it. Um, so I, I, got, I got some good video footage. I had an amazing time, but I rushed. I tried too many things and it just didn't work. Now, the morning before, 
was stunning. It was thicker fog. I decided to go somewhere on, on my own. I decided not to do any video. So I've got some video that I put on my phone for Instagram, but there's no video that I took with my, my cameras. So what I'll do is I'll show you some of that video and the photo, and then we'll come back and talk about it. just feeling so good about about the world because I didn't care whether I got a good shot or not and I think that meant I was more likely to get a good shot because I wasn't trying to force it so I was just just walking around and then as I was walking back to the car I remember recording a bit of video and thinking actually that could look quite good if the conditions were right so I looked behind me and then I saw that image and it just worked I, I really liked the the fence posts, I love this tree, just sort of almost putting its arm around the scene um, and, and creating that really nice framing into this distant fog. I like the way the fog just leads to nowhere, so you sort of, it's just very mis mystical. So then when I processed it, I was just very subtle with the processing um, and, and I just kept it warm in terms of the color tones. And I actually, it'd be interesting to know in the comments below, would you like me to do a video on how I process this image? Um, maybe if I show you the before and after now, so this is the before and after, would you like to know how I processed it? Because obviously there is a big difference with this, but the, but it was fairly subtle processing. Um, but there were some things I did with um, cut, um, split toning and, and other things like that. So if you are interested in seeing how I processed it, then post a comment below, I'll have a look at that. If nobody comments, then maybe I won't do that video. I think this image came about by me just being in a, in a much more creative mindset. I, I just didn't, I didn't try and force anything. I didn't think I have to get something out of this, which is often the case when I'm going out to vlog. I just was enjoying the moment of the day and, and I don't think I would have shot this the day after because I'd have thought, why would I shoot a path and a gate? You know, I just wouldn't, I, I, it wasn't the sort of th it isn't the sort of thing that I usually shoot, but by opening my mind a little bit and trying different things, then I, I managed to get this, and I was really pleased with it. So when I was researching this and, and putting together all the points I was going to speak about, a, 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 a recommendation came up on YouTube of one of the people I subscribe to, Jamie Windsor, um, about five ways to stay creative. I'll put the link here. It's a really good video, and if you are trying to stay creative in your career, in your photography or trying to improve your creativity in your photography or you've got into a creative rut then I definitely recommend watching it. Anyway that's it for this week thanks ever so much for watching and until next Sunday bye. <laughs>